you know, when you pull up to something, you're waiting. Don't take that time if you're waiting for a passenger that's already called for it. Don't take that time to look at your phone and catch up on texts and know that that's a lot of times that is the case. You get a couple texts while you're driving. You've picked up a ride. You're going to get them. You pick up a ride. You get there. Um, especially if you're doing this at night, uh, don't get there, you know, I've arrived and then right away, get on your phone and start texting. That shows your head down. You're not, you're not on your guard and you know, you're not looking around for your, you should be still in job until you drop that passenger off, you know, looking around, you know, waiting for your passenger to come. And as they approach, gauge them. I don't know many, you know, I, I talk to a lot of rideshare drivers and we talk about this a lot. Only the ones with a lot of service industry background really get this, but gauge them. Um, even if you don't think you're in a situation where you have to, you know, just watch them walk. Are they stumbling at all? I mean, are they drunk? And don't say because it's day it couldn't happen. You know, are they, um, you know, are they... Um, uh, showing any other signs of things that might worry you. And if so, you know, lock the door and, and uh, roll down the front passenger window just a little bit and, and you know, kind of, uh, so you're so-and-so, kind of identify yourselves, make sure you're comfortable with the ride. Or if you already know you're not comfortable with the ride, cancel. One thing I don't like, though, is don't cancel don't show up places, try and like weasel around. I see this a lot and run out the timer to cancel and get the five bucks. That's just sad. Deal with it head on, either end the trip, tell them you're canceling, cancel if you don't feel safe and drive away, that's fine, but you cancel it unless it's something that really needs to be put into their face. Be back tomorrow with more. Peace. So yesterday I addressed primarily rideshare drivers, but all gig workers. But today I kind of want to more address um, delivery and grocery shoppers. Uh, first of all, if you haven't seen the video I did about a month ago now um, with uh, Legal Rideshare out of Chicago, check that out. You'll learn a lot, especially when it comes to Instacart and Grubhub. Those two specifically, um, well, I'll just leave it to you. Go watch that video with the CEO and founder of Legal Rideshare. Um, but all of the platforms, not that good at any of the coverage during periods, you know, zero is personal, but one, two, or three, uh, and very difficult to work with in cases of stolen cars or things of that nature. So I just wanted to quickly say today that, you know, make sure at least maybe check into like, you know, how, how your policy is covered. Um, I'm not telling you to get extra insurance or whatever. Just kind of try and figure it out yourself a little bit. Maybe watch that again. Watch that legal rideshare episode that I did. Um, we talk about this kind of stuff a lot. But the other thing that I wanted to quickly mention is um, I get leaving the car on. And I get feeling secure in a lot of neighborhoods and stuff. And in the ones, maybe areas you don't or you don't know real well, maybe you do turn the car off and do all that. And that's probably the smarter move. A um, couple of things. Uh, you know, does everybody carry a like a two three dollar and ninety nine cent uh, little pocket mace or one that's either on your keychain or just kind of clips into your front pocket? Because you should. Um, and that's just personal advice. I mean, they're like they're like this big. They go inside your pocket with a little clip. I mean, that's really no harm, no foul. Um, but also, if you're doing delivery and you've got an older car, maybe it runs on a key. All right, but. Uh, do you got one of these? Because if you got one of these, I really hope that it is on you at all times. Um, your house keys, all that kind of stuff, they can be in the center console of the car. That's fine. But is this on you? Because this should be on your person at all times. Um, because they drive away, they ain't getting that far. So, uh, But anyway, that's it, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with uh, another one. And... Uh, got like three more and uh yeah i'm gonna get through this week all other creators please drop some safety videos then tell some other creators and then tell other creators and uh till tomorrow or actually tonight uh quick shout out i guess while i'm here uh come check out uh dashing grandpa and i live we're gonna, we're gonna uh, talk about it and uh, get on the podcast so peace see you guys tomorrow boom day three safety video sticking to it
Content creators, where are your safety videos? Come on, bring them on, bring them on. Let's get them going. Um, so today, I just want to uh, talk about um, knowing your limit and how you carry yourself. Um, the carrying yourself part is huge. That's something that through the service industry, um, those of us who have worked in the service industry behind the bar, um, any kind of, you know, where you're dealing with a lot of people, how you carry yourself matters, not just in your work and your pride, uh, but also how people perceive you and view you. So if I'm like head down, kind of doing my job and just sweeping things and end up paying attention, just kind of going through the motions, people will see that. Um, even at jobs, bosses will notice that they, they won't like that. Um, you know, they'll say this guy isn't motivated, you know, he's, 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 you know, um, you know, same thing with criminals. They'll notice that. So you want to be like, chin up, you know, you know, like wake your eyes up, you know, like look around, always, always, uh, always have everything, uh, in your range. Know what's going on everywhere. And when you're doing this kind of work, um, know what's going on everywhere. Because this type of work didn't exist a few years back, guys. And, you know, a new crime is is, is starting to find how to, um, you know, uh, take a ride share and, ja and carjack the guy. How to steal a car from delivery drivers. How to... People are figuring out how to attack the gig economy. We've been seeing it for years. So it's out there. You can see it. The other thing I want to talk about is your limit. And when, when I'm talking about that, um, I'll kind of relate it again to the bar. So, like, as a bartender, I got to watch everybody else's limit. They should know their own, but I got to watch it. You need to watch your own limit when it comes to how hard you work, how much you're putting out. Because even though I was just talking about you need to work hard all the time, if you're trying to feed your family, if you're trying to pay your rent, if you're trying to just keep your head above water, you're, if you get in an accident, you're not going to be able to do that. So even when you're like, I got to work more hours, I got to work more hours, a monster, if you can't, if you can't keep your eyes open anymore, um, two monsters or a monster drink or a Red Bull, that is not the solution. That is a very, very short lived solution and a trick on the brain. So get to bed. That's your body telling you to get to sleep and then just find some different hours to work these gigs, find different platforms, find other ways to earn, but keep yourself safe. You're not going to do anybody de any good dead. So, see you tomorrow. Peace. Safety video day four of five. Tomorrow will be the final one. It's, a, it's one that hits personally home to me the hardest. But I'll talk about this one, which probably in almost every case is always the most important. Um, don't be on your phone while you're driving. This doesn't even just require gig work. This is everybody, man. Don't be on your phone when you're driving. Don't be texting. Don't be reading things. Don't be... Don't be stupid. Don't be on your phone when you're driving. I know it's tempting. I know it. Um, I have a son that just finished up uh, all of his online classes, and now I will spend the next year doing uh, all of his... Uh, the driver permit requirements for getting his license. So I'm just entering that stage of a 15 year old who's getting stoked to drive. And I'm actually excited because I'm going to do my part to teach him correctly, but be careful. You guys all know this. We all know this. And yet, and we see other people doing this. And I know that I'm not the only one. It cannot be. And I've talked to other people, but I, I know that all of us have had encounters where it's like, God, that guy, and you can almost see him swerving. And you watch him texting. You're, you're, you're literally watching this whole thing go down. So we know what a danger it can be. Um, so in this case, I'm able to actually give some propers and uh, a shout out to Gary Middleton here because Middleton Apps, DUH, and Maximo actually help with this too while you're gig working. So you can set those uh, auto accept declines. You can set all your parameters. But that's not why I'm here today. I'm here today about the safety. I'm talking about not working on the apps. Your phone here. You know, if, if you have a map up or something, you got your music playing, do all that before you get going. Once you're going, be done. See you back here for tomorrow's closer of Safety Week. And thank you guys for joining us. Make sure to join us tonight 
uh, as we will have the round table going and some, uh, we got our four, we got four members, uh, Hannibal is hungry, Gary Middleton, um, Slavic will be joining us myself. And we got, uh, the CEO and CTO of para Jeff Tang and, uh, David Pickerel. So join us for sure. See you in a bit. Peace. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody for participating in this uh, Gig Safety 2022 rally that we had. Um, I think we had a good turnout, and there's a few more to still trickle in, but I will include the playlist will be in this video. So after you see this video, go into the show notes and click the playlist that I've included there, and I've, I've grabbed all the videos that other people made between April 1st and today, um, which was the challenge. Um, but, uh, yeah, pretty, I'm, I'm happy to see so many people did it and, uh, thank you. And this is my fifth and final one and it mainly applies to rideshare, but I, I, even you delivery people, I want you to hear this because it also applies to when you're not working, if you have kids. Okay. Um, so tons of rideshare. <laughs> I've done tons of rideshare. Um, and I got to tell you guys that, uh, I've seen it get better. I've seen it get worse. Um, I was actually working with the lift safety team back in 2016 or late 2015 about this because it was already a problem, right? As they were bringing it into our market was, um, underage users. Um, so minors, minors without accompanying adults. So, um, it started kind of more downtown in Denver and then, um, like in, at around that time, 2016, by 2017, the big problem was high schools. There was every, everybody with a smartphone had their parents app or they had preloaded a card or whatever. Most people just had their parents app though, to be honest. And I can't tell you guys how many Lyft and Uber drivers I saw pull up and take these, uh, these kids who, who weren't 18. And then with, and at the time, all the news stories, and you can find a ton of them on uberliftdrivers.com. Um, but all the, all the news stories about minors were horrible. They were getting sexually abused or at least making these kind of charges. Well, guess what? Uber's insurance, if you pick up a minor, drops you. Your insurance drops you. This is a 100% no deductible, completely on you out of your pocket deal that you will be facing and actually picking up a minor driving one minor could wreck the rest of your life and put you in debt for millions of dollars even if nothing happened if something did happen you can count on everything being over so you know what guys i took a major stand in this and i still to this day will if it ever gets to be a hot thing again I, you'll see me up about it so you know what don't pick up minors now, on the other side of that coin, if you're a parent, make sure that you have a talk with your kids about riding if they're not, if, if they're in high school, like my son's in high school right now, 15, he knows not to get in an Uber or a Lyft, regardless, doesn't matter what his friends do, doesn't matter. He knows to call me and no matter what, I'll figure it out. I'll come get him. I'll have somebody else get him something, but not to ever do it. And that if I, you know, and he knows because of all I do that I'd be all over him. Um, so he really won't, he knows better, you know, he, would he try and talk his friends out of it and stuff? No, you know, if, if his buddies were going to do something like that, he's the kind of guy that he would just, um, he, he makes his own decisions. He's a cool kid. Um, but he would, you know, there's not much to do there. So every parent has to do their part. Tell your kids not to get in cars. It's the same thing as, as I'm, I might be older than some of you, but it's the same thing as when we were kids and told not to get into cars with strangers. You know what I mean? At their age, well, even at our age, it is strangers when an Uber pulls up. But at their age, it's really strangers. And, uh, you know, I know. I mean, a lot of high schoolers that are 17 look like they can handle themselves, might be on the football team, all these kind of things. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All it takes is that guy having a gun, whatever. Um, but no kids. And I was, I was a jerk about it. Um, to the point of if they ever gave me crap, like, well, I'm not going to cancel it. I'd say, okay, I'm just going to wait it out then. 
you know, and uh, I would sit there and wait out everyone, and I don't ever do that to anybody. I've said before in videos, I'm happy to cancel, but not those. You know, they'd, you know, they'd, I'd call, their parents would call me, and I'd be like, are you kidding? Are you arguing about your kid's safety? I'm not going to do it. So, that's it. Safety week. Gig Safety 2022. Peace, y'all!